Hi, Edward. Hi, Thomas. How are you? Good, how are you? So we are here in beautiful Salzburg with a castle in the background. Yeah. It's your first time in Austria? Oh, yes. Yeah. So for me not, I'm from Europe, but you're from? I'm in Boston. All right. I'm uh, first time visiting this beautiful city and this country. So great to be here. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Thomas, for hosting me. <laughs> so. So, uh, so we are here together, basically, because um, both our websites uh, are in a collaboration. So you with IMSLP and myself at MuseScore. And we are starting up a new collaboration together called OpenScore. Um, but first we want to introduce what we do basically. Uh, and so people know what IMSLP is, what MuseScore is. So tell me, Edward, uh, how did you get started? What, why did you start IMSLP? Yeah, I started IMSLP uh, 10 years ago when I was a music student because I found it very hard to find certain scores. Uh, they're either checked out of the library or just not available. Mm -hmm. um, so I started the project um, as a hobby to, to make uh, older music editions more widely available to just anybody with an internet connection, whether you're in the US or you're in Africa or you're in China, wherever you are, um, as long as you have internet, you should have access to music. That's our philosophy. Beautiful. So Thomas, why do you get started with MuseScore? So I'm a, I'm a very amateur piano player and I've always needed sheet music in order to play my favorite songs. Um, but having said this, I always had a struggle using sheet music because uh, reading from paper is not my st uh, strongest skill. And so I was always looking for how can I have the sheet music being played for me. So basically a digital score and uh, so I was looking for software uh, that could uh, be used to transform paper to digital uh, so I could listen to the score and change it the way I want. And that's how I got started with MuseScore. I actually teamed up with the original uh, MuseScore creator, uh, Werner Schwer from Germany. And uh, yeah, eight years later now, uh, MuseScore is one of the most popular notation softwares in the world used by you know, composers, arrangers, but also people like me who have this struggle with sheet music and use the tool to learn faster and yeah, play the music they want to play. And not just you, I mean I use MuseScore too and I have a training in classical music but really the other tools are just either overpriced or they just don't give me what I expect. So I found MuseScore very helpful. Um, and I've watched just the impressive rise of MuseScore, uh, Muse just replacing a lot of the decades established software yeah. that everybody used to use, but uh, now prefer MuseScore. So, congratulations. Well, that's, that's good to hear. Um, that's one of, the, one of the particular, I mean, unique things about MuseScore. It's open source, it's free, so it can be used by anyone, it can be adapted by anyone. And, um, and we did this because, well, there are so many, many reasons why people want to use our software. And we, as developers, didn't know in advance how people would want this software. And that's why we made it open source, so it can be changed by anyone. Um, right. And, and your uh, and MuseScore is on all platforms, yeah. am I right? Mac, Linux, uh, Windows, obviously. Yes. And then you also have an app. I heard you have apps on iOS. And Android, Android and yeah. two versions too. So, so it's yeah. basically a constellation right now. It's it's desktop software. It's a website where people can upload their scores and share with friends and choir mem choir members and so forth. Uh, and it's also uh, yeah mobile apps uh, which people can then uh, use to to learn their favorite songs. But the main pain point that a lot of our users have is they want to play one of the famous classics. And so they search the internet, mm -hmm. they end up on Amazon P, for instance, mm -hmm. which has this vast catalog of sheet music. Uh, and then they always have this pain point where they have to transcribe the scores from paper or from scanned PDF to uh, digital. Mm -hmm. and, and that's an issue that we see reoccurring in our community. Mm -hmm. And uh, I assume that maybe you got also some, some requests within your community for digital scores. We, we definitely see uh, very, many very good use cases for digitized music. As uh, um, I was talking to your team, 
I understand that there is a huge uh, request for like braille music mm -hmm. and for other use like playback for um, especially obscure scores because we have a lot of scores. Uh, most of which do not have recordings attached to them, right. and people just look at the score and it's silent. Uh, for I mean, for professional musicians, maybe you can imagine the the piece, but for most people, you have to have some way of hearing it. Yes. So what MuseScore provides is a is a very big feature, and if we can get more things digitized to MuseScore to Music XML, then that would be that would benefit uh, the entire music community. I think so. So the way that people can understand it is your community is helping to, let's say, scan the world's sheet music that is on paper, and then the music community comes in to actually take that scan and to turn it into a digital score. Exactly. And make that work then available to everyone. That would be the ultimate goal, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. We would uh, love to see that happen. <laughs> uh, it will take work, but uh, we're working on it. Sure. So, so with that, we kind of introduce uh, the Open Score project, mm -hmm. uh, which aims to liberate the world's classical sheet music or music, if you will, uh, the public domain music that is out there, and basically make those make new open editions uh, in a open format. Uh, so anyone can basically listen to the score, edit the score, and share the score the way they want. Exactly. And so we are bundling our, the power of our two communities together, taking paper, converting paper to PDF. That's MSLP. MuseScore takes the PDF and turns it into a digital score. Exactly. And I really like what you said um, earlier uh, today when we were talking. Um, you said that uh, open score is like a platform where you have a baseline of uh, digitized works where people can build on it, people can make their own additions, people can make their improvements to the score. I think that's really powerful. Um, and that's something that's lacking from scan music. Yeah, absolutely. So. so this can spur some new creativity, people yeah, getting the ability to uh, make new arrangements from, from those classical works. And what is a very important is that the results of open score or such an open score edition uh, will be free of any copyright restrictions, meaning that everyone will be able to take those editions and then make it their own and exactly. then reshare it with others, even being able to make money out of it uh, because there are no copyright restrictions on it. And I think that's kind of, that sums it up why this would be so great if that happens. Um, yeah. At the IMSLP, we've always um, loved Creative Commons licenses and people who create stuff to be shared. We think that's, that's really one of the foundations of music. You want to share your, mu music, your music with others. You want others to, to hear your music and to build on your music. So we're very proud to be a co-sponsor of OpenScore. Well, I mean, you're a partner of, of OpenScore. I mean, IMSLP is the first step. MuseScore is the second step. And, and together we can make this milestone in the history of music possible. And it can only happen once. I mean, once these open score editions are out there, the job is done. Everyone will be able to build on it. So it's a one-time event in the history of music. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really thrilled. I'm really looking forward to see uh, what will happen if we bundle the power of our two communities together. Me too. Well, uh, yeah, it will be great. Yeah, it will be awesome.